Well, good morning. Kind of a, another rainy day here in Kansas City, but it's a good day, and as we often say, this is the day the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. God's good, isn't he? Thanking him for his blessings upon me today, and uh, thanking him for the privilege again of another Lower Lights devotional here with Pastor Hayton. I was thinking yesterday as I spoke on this matter of commitment, how I learned early in life as just a young boy what it was to make a commitment. I committed to carrying the Boonville Daily News to my uh, customers each day, Monday through Saturday, six days a week, and through all kinds of weather, trudging up and down the hilly streets of Boonville, Missouri, delivering the paper, but I learned what it was to be committed to that. And commitment is something I think that we need to learn and have instilled within us. I think that my spirit of commitment surely came from my dad and mom. I don't know of anyone that was more committed to doing the will of God than what my dad was. Uh, it reflected in the decisions that he made in following God's will. It reflected in the life experiences that he talked about when he preached. I think that uh, my dad was just a shining example of someone that was totally committed to do the will of God, totally committed to the ministry that God had called him to do. And perhaps some of that rubbed off on me because I am deeply committed today to ministry. I know I always want to put uh, God first and put my family in its proper priority as well but I do believe that God expects us to be committed to that which he has called us to do. And even if he hasn't called you to special ministry, such as preaching, uh, he's called you to love and to serve him and to walk with him. And you need to be committed to that. I was thinking on this line of commitment today, just briefly here, about a ball team. Now, I'm not a sports fan, of course, as you know. But uh, living in Kansas City, you've got to kind of be a little bit mindful of what the Kansas City Chiefs are doing and what the Kansas City Royals are uh, doing. Right now, they're not doing very well after w winning the world championship last year. But, uh, you know, if you uh, going to have a winning team, it takes committed members. Can you imagine having a winning ball team if every player wasn't totally committed now, I know that there's lengthy contracts that those guys sign before uh, they're hired on to take a position on a ball team. I imagine that those contracts are, I've never seen one, of course, and don't know much about it, but I imagine there's quite a lengthy contract that uh, they have their attorney pour over, and, and uh, maybe they're so anxious to sign because most generally it's a multi-million dollar contract. But I do know that that contract binds them, and perhaps that accounts for a lot of their commitment, but whatever it takes to get them committed, uh, that's what it takes to have a winning team, and the owners of the ball teams, and the coaches, and everyone else involved in, in producing a winning team, they know how important it is that the players are really totally committed. Can you imagine the kind of team that it would be if person uh, didn't always show up for practice. Can you imagine what it would be? There's this game scheduled and somebody thinks, well, that's not a good time for me. I've got other plans and uh, I'm not going to be able to show up at that uh, game tonight. Uh, I'm sure that we can quickly realize that without the commitment to those ball players, commitment to daily practice, commitment to teamwork, Commitment to showing up at game time, what a lousy team it would be. And you know, we think a lot of times about the church. Uh, we are a team that's out there to really win the world. We're a team that is supposed to be building the kingdom of God here on earth. And if we're going to be a winning team, we've got to have some committed people. I think of the committed commitment that I see in my own church people I know that there's times that people are away, of course, a lot of different circumstances. They say most any congregation is going to have 20% of their people gone any given Sunday. 
There's rest and relaxation that people need, vacation time, of course, and family activities and other uh, things that will sometimes occasionally keep someone away from church. But can you imagine what kind of church we would have if it were not for people that were committed to church, committed to the uh, services of the church? There's no inspiration for we preachers in empty pews. So there's about as much inspiration in preaching to a word pile as there are empty pews. And if people aren't committed to attending, there's going to be a lot of empty pews. If people aren't committed to giving, the needs of the church are not going to be met. You might show up to church and, and the lights will be off. You might show up to church and wonder where the heating or the air conditioning is because were it not for people committed to giving, we would not enjoy the comfort comfortable sanctuaries that we enjoy. Show up to church and you might see the preacher up there looking hungry and ragged because he hadn't been paid for a while. Well, you can see the importance of commitment, can't you? We need committed Christians, those that are committed to do the will of God, those that are committed to advancing the work of God here on this earth. Are you one of those that are truly committed to God and to his work today? Heavenly Father, bless us throughout this day. Give us that spirit of commitment that will make your church a winning team in this world. Lord, bless us throughout this rainy day of life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'll see you tomorrow now on Lord Light's Devotional. Have a good day. Goodbye.